and welcome back to the anime and manga news for the week ending November 29th, 2019. First off, it was announced on Sunday that Kyoto Animation's first studio building, the site of July's devastating fire, will be demolished. Preparation for the demolition, which includes emptying out the building and building scaffolding, will begin on Monday and will last through the end of the year, so roughly a month. The actual demolition is set to begin in January and will end in late April. In a press conference in October, Kyo Ani President Hideaki Hata commented, quote, It truly pains my heart whenever I see that treasured building in that state, end quote. He had said earlier in the summer that they considered creating a public park and monument at the site, as the staff and people in the neighborhood might not want to see the gruesome sight of the destroyed building. As of the report on Sunday, the studio has not yet decided on plans for after the demolition. Let us hope that the demolition goes smoothly and that something beautiful can be built in its place as Kyo Annie and the community continue to heal. Uh, I know it's a rough one to start with, but, you know, that's the news. So let's move on to something a little, little lighter and happier in, um, in tone. The Association of Japanese Animations has, publish, has published a preview for its upcoming Anime Industry Report 2019, excuse me, which actually examines trends in the industry for the year of 2018. Uh, Japan's animation industry has seen growth for the past nine years following the crash of 2009, and six years of consecutive record high market values overall. The domestic anime market grew for the first time since 2014, and the overseas market surpassed 1 trillion yen for the first time, which is about 9 billion US dollars. That's mostly China. The chart on the screen shows the trend in market values over the last 16 years, with the domestic market, ah, with the domestic market denoted by the solid line at the top, and the overseas market by the dotted line on the bottom. The report also noted trends for fields within the industry. In 2018, live events and streaming both saw a significant increase. Live events grew by 23% and streaming by 10%, but still a small part of the overall pie. The home video market, on the other hand, decreased by 23%, making this the fifth year in a row with falling home video sales. The full 2018 industry report will be published by the association on December 9th. So keep an eye out for that. I'm actually going to be putting that up on a website for um, everyone to look at. Meanwhile, Japan's Agency for Cultural Affairs has announced this year's recipients for their Commissioner for Cultural Affairs Award, which honors individuals who've made distinguished accomplishment in artistic and cultural activities. Among the recipients are Gundam creator Yoshiyuki Tomino, perhaps uh, useful for the current... Uh, uh, anniversary of Gundam, manga artist Rumiko Takahashi, and Hidenori Murata, who founded the anime studio I Ken. The announcement said of Tomino, quote, He has endeavored for the growth of the next generation and made a great contribution to the promotion of Japan's arts and culture, end quote. He created and directed the original mobile suit Gundam in 1979, and as we all know, the series has been popular all over the world since then. Uh, Takahashi is the creator of incredibly popular works like Inuyasha and Rama One Half, among others. The award's comments on her were as follows, quote, As she released a multitude of great works as a manga creator over many years, she has been endowed with remarkable achievements inside and outside Japan, and she has made a great contribution to the promotion of Japan's arts and culture, end quote. A ceremony will be held to present this year's 74 awards on December 6th, Despite the high number of recipients, a lot more than them, it is rare for awards to be given to those involved with the anime and manga industry. So, extra congratulations to this year's winners. Come on. Uh, this week also brings a few more announcements of upcoming anime series, which I know it's kind of what everyone is looking forward to. Let's, let's dive in. Monday's issue of Weekly Shonen Jump magazine, the big one, announced a TV anime adaptation of Gege Akutami's Jujutsu Kaisen manga. The creator of the manga and three of the voice cast for the new anime will, ap will appear at a stage presentation in the upcoming Jump Festa 2020 event, so we can likely expect more information on the series when that takes place on December 22nd. The manga launched in March of 2018, so it's pretty new, 
and is licensed in English by Viz Media. The story centers on Yuji Itadori, who, quote, despite his insane athleticism, would rather just hang out with the occult club. However, he soon finds out that the occult is as real as it gets when his fellow club, club members are attacked, end quote. If I were him, I might wish I'd just used that athleticism and played sports instead. On the other hand, I never played sports, so who knows. Meanwhile, um, in, uh, see here, there we go. If scary occult attack, uh, sorry, if scary occult attacks aren't quite your thing, how about some cute magical girls? On Friday, Toei Animation revealed the name and theme of the next anime series in the Precure franchise. The 17th Precure anime series, that's right, will be titled Healing Good Precure, and will premiere in spring of 2020. The summary on the show's official website reads, quote, The partners are animals? The healing animals join forces and give treatment to our important earth, end quote. What will the new cures and their animal friends be treating our important earth from? Monsters? Climate change? Probably both. Look forward to the spring to find out. From cute girls with animals to cute animal girls, a new TV anime has been announced in Sanrio's Show by Rock franchise. The new, t the new series, titled Show by Rock Mashu Mairesh, focuses on the band Mashu Mairesh, uh, with four exclamation points, or I think two exclamation points, I'm not sure, a four-girl band made up of a fox girl, a striped cat girl, a wolf girl, and a girl of devilment Kiryu lineage, apparently some form of dragon, in other words, she has horns and a pointy tail. The new series is being animated at Kinema Citrus, with Polygon Pictures handling the CG production. It'll premiere on Tokyo MX and other stations on January 9th. Tokyo MX will be airing a special December 31st that will give more information about the anime and the related new Show by Rock game. You knew that was coming. And will air the first episode of the new anime as a preview. So, for those interested, there we go. Moving on to news from visual novel studio Key, legendary studio, which is celebrating its 21st anniversary this year. It's all grown up. As part of the celebration, they, re they revealed a teaser image hinting at eight upcoming projects. The um, uh, one picture represents Heaven Burns Red, which was announced with its own website this week. This will be the first all-new game developed by Jun Maeda in 13 years, and is set to launch on iOS and Android sometime in 2020. Hmm. Um, then the key image for Planetarian Snow Globe, a crowdfunding campaign launched today to fund a 25-minute anime OVA based on the short story Snow Globe, a prequel to the original Planetarian game. Planetarian previously inspired both a five-episode uh, net anime adaptation, an ONA, and an anime film. Um, then um, the upcoming anime adaptation of Kud Wafter? Kud Wafter? I'm not sure. Kud Wafter, maybe. A spin-off visual novel from Little Busters. The anime was successfully crowdfunded, crowdfunded in 2017, but had its release delayed from September 2019 to September 2020 due to difficulty scheduling and some staff changes. I don't know. Um, finally, um, an image teases the Visual Novel New Project, which I assume is a new visual novel project. What will the other four slots in the teaser be? I guess fans will have to continue the anniversary celebration while they wait to find out. Eight projects from Key. That's pretty nuts. Uh, the 2020 edition of the guidebook Kono Light Novel Nasugoi, or This Light Novel is Amazing, came out on Monday and included a list of the light novels that accumulated the most ranking points over the last 10 years. The exact formula for scoring points differs every year, but the rankings always include both results from an online poll and input from collaborators, which includes creators, influencers, and others related to the light novel industry. So, as you can read from the bottom, the light novel series that accumulated the most points for the last decade was, drumroll, not really unsurprisingly, Reki Kawahara's Sword Art Online. The Sword Art Online novels topped the ranking charts in 2012 and 2013, and made the top 10 every year from 2011 to 2019. After his win, Kawahara reflected on the changes in the light novel world over the last 10 years, and I quote, I believe that the 2010s is the era where light novels will leap from the internet to the page. SAO is unquestionably an online novel, but it was serialized on my personal website, 
and I myself debuted through winning a newcomer's prize, albeit for a different work. Thinking about it, SAO is representative of the transition period. Doubly so, now that it's been selected for this ranking. I wonder what new trend will come upon the light novel world in the 2020s." End quote. Interesting question. Second, rate, second ranked of the decade's light novels was A Certain Magical Index, with the Ryuo's work is never done, and Is It Wrong to Try to Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon, ranked at third and fourth, respectively. Yes, that's where those came from. Congratulations to Kawahara and SAO, and to all the novels of the decade, which is an odd thing to say. Uh, let's see here, moving on. Um, Shueisha and X-Flag opened a new, quote, limited time free manga site, end quote, this week. The site, whose title translates to Sports Battle Manga Research Center, plans to, to focus on, quote, sports and battle to research the future of manga, end quote. Okay. The website launched on Tuesday with 15 manga and three one-shots, and is also streaming animated promo videos for eight other manga, four brand new, and four upcoming manga that will debut at a later date. Not sure what they mean, the included, whether they mean the included manga will feature sports and battle, or whether sports and battles will take place on the website. Either way, let's hope the research is successful and improves the future of manga, battle, and otherwise. Um, and also, let's be honest, the sports formula. Uh, let's see here. Um, now, if you found yourself concerned with all the year's crackdowns on pirated manga or at a loss of how to read them without buying every volume, your solution might have just debuted. The Manga Planet manga subscription service launched last week and provides users unlimited access to their library of English translated manga for a fee of $6.99 per month. The library currently features 10 different manga titles and is working with a number of publishers and independent artists to keep expanding. 10 is a small number, but I'm sure they'll expand. The service began as a joint pro uh, project by Dainippon Printing Company Limited and Fantasista Inc. and aims to bring, quote, new manga to fans from all over the world and support artists and the industry, end quote. So that's interesting. Hopefully that goes somewhere, you know, um, Dropping money on manga is often one of the big problems with, uh, uh, with keeping up with it, so a subscription service might be the, the, the best solution. That's all the news for this week. Thanks all for watching. See you next week.